recording begun. Thanks, Sean. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the August 3rd Chaos Community Monthly call today. So it's good to see everybody. Um, the minutes are in the chat, so if you could add yourself, that would be awesome. And tell us one good thing in your life recently. Is, I found that surprisingly like reflective. You, you can take a, take a go at it too. Uh, all right, so here's our agenda today. So we have uh, kind of six things on the agenda and we can obviously add things. I do wanna adjourn just a little bit early. I, um, just for chaos con questions. I mean, everybody can stick around, but at the end, I think there's just a few logistics things we need to do for chaos con. So uh, with that, the first thing on our list is the metrics freeze. And Kevin is not here, but Georg, can you speak to this a little bit? Because I know you're always deeply involved in this process. So this is part of our metric release. We have a, a schedule of about six months where we want to release new metrics. And the way we work is chaos working groups create metrics and then open them up for review. And for, for one month before the actual release, we freeze new metrics. So we, we say, okay, we're gonna be done adding more metrics to be reviewed. And we're gonna focus on asking actively for reviews. And the release freeze for the next release was two days ago, August 1st. And so now we are in the public comment period where if you go to our metrics page, here I'll put it in the chat, uh, and you go through, there are some metrics that are marked under review. And this is where we want you to find the issue but there's also an issue mm. connected with it and leave comments, feedback, a uh, simple heads, uh, thumbs up. Yep, looks good, makes sense. Or if you have improvements, we want to hear about them as well. And the working groups that develop the metrics then review all of those comments and feedback and make improvements. All right, thank you. Uh, looks like we have seven metrics under review this time, which is great on my quick count. Put the minutes back in here. Hi, Armstrong. Hi, Lucas. Hello, Matt. Hello, Matt. Um, so yeah, if you could take a look, that would be uh, fantastic. Gary, do you want to just real quickly talk about, I don't see any of the like Ritzik or Yash on, just in terms of the release process and how the automation is going there as well. I just, I just want to mention quickly, the last time Kevin and I talked, the metrics review period was going to start in September. So something is different now, or maybe Kevin and I misunderstood each other. So I'm going off the dates that are on the metrics page and it says release, uh, the freeze is August 1st and then the release is first week of September. Okay. If we I, wanted to change that, we can, but those are I the don't, dates we published. <clears throat> it's entirely possible that I misremember or misunderstood what Kevin and I talked about, but I thought we put them, pushed them forward because, um, we weren't trying to hit the um, OSSNA, but maybe maybe this is what, maybe this is the right date. So let's assume they're the right dates, unless Kevin confirms otherwise. The badging date is um, September fifth to the end of September. <clears throat> That's um, based off of the release cycle of the of the metrics. Okay. All right. So we we stick with what we've got. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, unless okay. Kevin and I have a different conversation. Okay, uh, right on. So Georg, the Mars project, the continuous metrics, or the 
automated release process? Yes, we have two Google Summer of Code students who are working on helping us automatically generate a PDF of our metrics. And they have done an amazing job. So you can, you can go to the repository, you can clone it, it has a Docker image with one command. Now there are some options that pop up whether you want the English version or you want one of our translated versions and it creates a PDF. And in, in, if you know how much time we spent in the past, I, I remember Kevin and I spending half a day, both of us putting together the PDF, uh, screenshotting the website release. And this is, is going to save us a lot of time. Um, there, it is something where when we get ready, I'll, I'll share the PDF or we'll share it so shortly what it looks like. And then we would love some feedback because we can make changes to what it looks like. We have much more flexibility now. Uh, under the hood, we're generating a LaTeX document and have all freedoms of styling it however we want. Um, so yeah, feedback on that would also be welcome. This is only automating the PDF release. It does not affect anything else with the exception that now we have some technical requirements for the working groups uh, with naming standards or where images are placed. Uh, but that's all described in the metrics template. And if we find an error running the software, creating the PDF will definitely open a PR and let you know. Thank you, Georg. Um, do looking at Don with Common and Shaden with Risk and Evolution, are you, do you know what those standardizations are or would it make sense to have like a little bit of time in the meeting? I, th I think we've largely standardized ours. Okay. Uh, I've accepted pull requests along those lines. So okay. to my knowledge, we are standardized. No, I'm not sure where we stand on the on the common side, if there's anything special that we need to do to get ready for this release. Edward? I believe all of the working groups are compliant. They are okay. standardized. So unless there are any open pull requests, but I think all of them got merged in the last week or two. Okay. Gary, is there any process change that the working groups need to follow with the metrics release that we've been doing in the past? The process is um, we have the metrics that are created as markdown, just like before. Um, the naming convention is currently um, up to date. So unless you add anything else, we can ignore it for now. We are, and this is Vinod just worked on this, we, we are developing a checklist to help with this in the future, um, where the different, the, the process itself um, is gonna be just the checklist and we'll have a issue template that the working groups can use so when a metric is ready, just open an issue with that issue template, and then it's just check boxes to make sure that all of the requirements are being met. Um, so we are trying to simplify that and provide the resource to the working groups. But otherwise, right now, it's still the same. Add the markdown file, open an issue, and have the review there, just like before. I have added the link uh, in the chat to review the checklist if anything like uh, for us it's good to go if you feel anything you can suggest any changes. This is like a very handy thing once the uh, working group decides that metric is ready for release, they can follow the checklist and complete the process. Oh, okay, nice. And so will this be a checklist like what we use in badging? like in an issue which you can, or is this uh, a checklist that will be just available like in a doc like this? 
Okay. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can incorporate it in the issue and keep on marking that as things are done, they can check it out. I don't know whether uh, yes. Markdown has this facility to ch- check mark that things are done. Uh, I'm not sure on that. Okay. So um, Markdown does have that um, ability and GitHub has it. So um, I can create it in my Markdown and just um, you know check it in. Um, uh, but I wanted to call out that this process is fairly complex. So like as a starting point, a uh, checklist probably would be useful, but I'll bet that project managers will find it a little overwhelming to have this long ticket, right? All these items are gonna take a while. There's gonna be a million comments. It'll be a mess by the time they're done with it. So probably what people would prefer is, <laughs> I don't know, like like four lists or four tickets, something like that. So just putting that out there, I think managers, project managers or maintainers will probably prefer to customize, but we'll find the, the template a good starting point. Is your thought, Lucas, that this is too long of a list? Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of work and thinking and people will lose track by the time they get to the end. Okay. Um, well, uh, good thing. Uh, I think Vinod was asking for feedback, so thank you for that. <laughs> feedback, so. Yeah, the, uh, the only caveat in this, like reducing, this is the, I felt is the shortest version, what we do in the chaos while we release the metric. So I'll see how I can reduce it, but uh, I'll get back next week. So I, I have to review it again. So maybe we have one checklist for for a metric itself with the content and technical requirements um, before it gets added. And then we have one checklist for the process. Mm -hmm. And that is the release feedback metric. That would be one way we could split it up. That's a great idea. Yeah, Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Yeah. and we have... um, we have a metric and risk that's not on the release list that we think we released. So figure out whose action item that is. So there'll be eight metrics. It's probably not. Uh, it, um, it, I have created the pull request for that and I have followed all the steps. So once you accept it, I'll do the remaining steps. It's a, like the complete process. Oh, okay. So there's a pull request I haven't merged. I thought I thought yeah. we had one released, and I, I'm like, where's the, that metric? Okay, yeah. I'll accept that now. So is that one of the seven, or is that an eighth then? Uh, I have to look at that. Uh, All right. Well, I'll, I'll that. merge the I'll okay. merge the pull request while we're here. Okay. Great. Thank you uh, for the feedback and stuff <laughs> information. Yeah. Provided, yeah. I was like at a total loss of words, so I, I went to stuff. <laughs> um, so let's see. Moving on on our list, kind of in the interest of time, I moved one up just because we're talking about metrics right now. Uh, number eight on our agenda was, uh, what's the process of proposing changes to existing metrics? This isn't available in the community handbook. Um, did somebody put that in there? I didn't, or who put it in there, I suppose somebody did. Sorry, sorry, what, uh, I missed that. Who put that in there? Who put that item in there? Did you put that in there? uh, The process of reviewing the existing metrics? No, the process of changing an existing metric. So yes, yes, I I have put it like, I need to change one uh, or make some uh, changes. So I was not sure what is the exact process. And I looked at the handbook. There was no written process like if we need to make a change to the existing release metric, how do we go about it? Okay, I mean, my first reaction to that is if it, it's kind of like um, making a change to like um, to certain documents. Like if it if it doesn't change the nature of the document, I, I I'm personally okay with just issuing a pull request on that without review. Okay. 
you know, what I, like so if it's if it's editorial or if it's adding a sentence that improves some clarity on a topic. I mean, that's still within the nature of the metric. I think if the metric is changing in full, okay, then it probably needs to be back under review. Okay. And then any change, if it's the first one, Gaywer, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there's just a pull request issued, it would be just picked up in the next release anyway, without much discussion. Is that right? Okay. Yep, especially small changes. Yeah, that need to go through a review process. Yeah. I was like, if I created a pull request, it got merged. Will this be uh, added as a like uh, review for the next release or something? I was not sure on that. That okay. is where I. I think if it doesn't change the nature of the metric, you know, okay. it's the spirit of the metric, kind of. Right. Then you use your best discretion on that. Okay. But there's no review needed. Okay. Okay. Then I'll create a request for the one I, I was planning to work on. Okay. Um, looking back at Georg again, do you want to, even if there's just a, like a sentence that's changed, do you want to track that in any way? Like it doesn't need to go for review, but I mean, I guess yes, it's it be, a little bit. It would but. be great to have a, a comment on the release notes issue in each working group, because this also means the translators will need All to right. alert it. And so if every working group has an issue for release notes and any change to existing metrics, please also just leave a comment saying, hey, we made a change. What the change is in detail, we can always get from the Git log, but just knowing that there was a change would be good. Okay, so I just, in summary, small changes won't go back out for review, large changes should go back in out for review, and then both small and large changes should be documented in the release notes. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, um, moving right along. We are on, as this is our monthly call, we are on working group updates. And so I don't necessarily need to go working group by working group, but um, maybe the floor is open at this point. So if you'd like to speak up, that would be great. And I can capture your thoughts. Our value working group uh, in last two meetings, there was not much attendance. So nothing has been done. The attendance is pretty low. Which working group? Value. 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 Okay. Yeah. I think that I think the later in the week working groups suffer a little bit for attendance, candidly, because that's on a Thursday. Just something to consider. Um, Vinod, do you have um, thoughts on? I know that like common is kind of at the same time as yours on off. And Don is yeah. always really attentive to send out that reminder, even just a day or two before, which might help. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I'll follow that. Sorry, uh, thank you for bringing that up, Vinod. If, if we need to be more deliberate with improving attendance, we can do that. Um, risk or evolution or common or uh, risk has a we're in a met we released one metric um, uh, dependencies and uh, it's uh, upstream dependencies and that's un uh, currently under review. I may have to had it, have it added to the list um, because the pull request didn't get merged, so it is now. And ready to go. Uh, we've also got a queue of what we're calling minimum viable metrics or MVMs, 
of about six or seven that, that I think we'll be actively working on to the next several months. And, in, and uh, we have one talk accepted at OSS Summit North America. Congratulations on the talk acceptance. Yeah, that, that's a long story, but yes, thank you to the group, to the group. I confess I, well, I reversed the narrative for our two submissions and um, which is why uh, they weren't accepted. And so one we're gonna do at OSPOCON and one we're gonna do at OSSNA, or I'm sorry, the uh, membership summit and one at OSSNA. And uh, that was a clerical error on my clerical part, but we got it, we got it sorted out. So Sophia was asking which one is accepted to OSSNA? It's the panel. All right. I think the, the chaos project, we are the experts in panels. We always uh, get yeah. panels accepted. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to confirm that because I'm not on my main computer, but that's, okay. yeah. And to be honest, I like the panel format much better because you can interact with people. It's much better than just one way talks. Is, yeah. it, a, is it a panel on dependencies? Is that? Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, could you could you tell me what minimum viable metrics is? Like, what's the so so after substantial discussion about how do we define metrics and a recognition that the boundary of what a metric of what a dependency is and how we interpret it is the subject of a great deal of discussion in open source, much like the definition of a commit was uh, a mere five years ago, and. <clears throat> So uh, that's that's a lot of the, the minimum vial metrics are the six or seven total metrics that we have identified as, okay, these are places where we think we can agree on a common definition and they are clearly bounded. And they give us a clear beachhead to start the metrics discussion, to start creating common definitions for things that are related to dependencies. And I think that from that, and Sophia, please speak up as well, because you've had a very large role in defining that with us. Um, that's that's where it's that's where we start. Sophia might still have a lawnmower going off in the background. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, me, take it. Um, but no, yeah, I, I agree with what you said, Sean. I think there's just a, such a big topic. And we were having trouble as a group trying to figure out how to tackle a huge topic. So outside of the first metrics definition, a lot of the MVP is just trying to figure out how to structure the rest of the metrics that might follow suit in a way that's logical and thought through just because we are attempting not to boil the ocean, but boil like a small pond instead that could be a subset of the ocean. Uh, and we admit that it'll probably continue to grow the more people that get involved. So hopefully it provides some kind of starting point and structure that can inform how we approach the rest or follow-up metrics. Great, thank you, Sean and Sophia. Um, Georg, you had, I'm guessing you put in app ecosystem. Do you wanna speak to that? Yeah, the app ecosystem working group we are building metrics for large ecosystems of projects that all kind of work together like kde or gnome and we built last year the event organizer metrics and so we met with the with the um, organizers from the kde event and the gnome event and got feedback and now we, we have some improvements to make to our recommendations for metrics that we are working on. One of them is to reduce the metrics and one is to change the presentation from a long list in the markdown file to maybe slides. 
So that is an idea we'll be working on. And then also they are now going back to see if they can do the metrics for the past events or start collecting data to report these metrics on future events. So that's, that's uh, exciting news. And then we are working on marketing uh, metrics. We had a podcast uh, a while ago where we had collected a conversation or record a conversation with marketing experts from these communities. And so we're working on the metrics there. And then most recently we had some interest in um, how do we look at metrics for the projects themselves and see them at a high level, basically bubble up the metrics and have the coordinators across projects role, uh, metrics for, for that role. So that's conversations ongoing in this group. Thank you. And that's um, listening to you, Ty. Um, I think it kind of leads into there's a, a coordination for a new working group. Lucas, you had brought that together. And so I'm still staying with the app ecosystem stuff, Georg. Um, and this was about like metrics models, right? About how metrics can be brought together in ways that are meaningful for people. So, right, as opposed to just the atomic metric. I mean, it's really exactly like what you're talking about. Can I so, make a suggestion? Yeah. And I think it's not a metrics working group. I think it's a design working group or a metrics use working group. And, and the distinction is important because the mission, I think, is fundamentally different. I don't know what the right words are, but what we're really trying to do is create packages that people can use that are sort of met metric collections. And so exactly. we'll be entirely different than the work of an ordinary working group. Yeah, agreed. I don't think that the, does the app ecosystem create metrics? Or, I mean, is that the mindset? Um, we, we kind of sort of do, but not like the other uh, working groups. So we, we do describe metrics that are not represented in any of the other working groups, uh -huh. but we don't feel, or we, we haven't done the step of getting them added to our metrics release and formalizing them. Okay. So, so is, is this, it? sorry. The, the focus has been more about, okay, we have, a set of questions, what are metrics we could use? How do we, how do, how do we understand this, this complex thing through multiple metrics? So would the, is, it, is the proposal that the app ecosystem working group become the metrics models working group or that the metrics models working group is a new working group? Well, I, this is the, this is, that's the question. Okay. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There's, there are new, there's a new working group being proposed, which is kind of around yeah. the model, which was the model that came out of the Asia Pacific call. Yeah, yeah. And so that was, you know, like how to draw those together in a way that's more holistic way of looking at the metrics, which is listening to Georg, that's like exactly what's happening there. So maybe we don't need two, two working groups kind of doing the same yeah. thing. Or maybe we do, and I don't know. My, my only what question. What if? Um, and I, sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Okay, thank you. Um, what if? What if we um, consider this as a kind of a mandate for the app ecosystem working group? Like define it. I know that that's like giving somebody else work. I don't really mean to do it that way, but just um, it seems like that might be the natural breakdown, and maybe the thing that the um, that is on the agenda right now is to define this task and kind of figure out what exactly the deliverable is so that it's you know easier to do in a practical way. I like the idea of bringing together the work and I'm, I'm happy to invite everyone who wants to work on the, um, the metric <clears throat> models or the design of how do we bring these together? And then we can have the conversation in the app ecosystem working group. And because I'm not the only person there. And then we can see, does it make sense to work together on this or does it make sense to have two groups? So 
but this I think like, we should first try to combine forces and not duplicate. So my, so my question, so I've only been to one app ecosystem working group, but my understanding is that focus is on Linux desktop applications. Hmm. Not exclusively, that's just the context that most of the members currently come from. But we want so, what the and, work that we do to be applicable in other communities as well. So like when I work, my question is for, for the projects that we've been working with with Augur, <clears throat> uh, if we've been working with uh, work dust applications, I'm not generally aware of it, but most of the metrics that get grouped together have nothing to do with um, Linux desktop applications. Mm. And so they're completely different points of discussion. Like, so I would see the overlap potentially small, but I'm willing to give it a try. <clears throat> I would like to give it a try too, and maybe in large part because, in large part because they <laughs> okay. sound similar. And um, this, the second other large part is like, if the app ecosystem has kind of developed a process by which they think about individual metrics and how they draw those together and how they represent those. Like it would be silly for like Lucas to be, yeah, to like redo, like rebuild a model on Wednesday morning <laughs> that like we could just use this model. So even if we um, spend some time in the app ecosystem model and we're like, this maybe isn't, we learned that this quite isn't quite the place to do the work around say a model, we at least understand the process like we've at least learned it for I, I, what they're doing there. Um, yeah, I'm totally sold on giving it a shot because I think we'd spend two months defining what is the process for deciding what to consolidate. And if that's, yeah, and they've part, already of, done it. If that's part of what you're already <laughs> doing, then you'll see me on that working group now. <clears throat> so Thank then you. Lucas, you and I might want to connect simply because I gave her to at the app ecosystem call, is it? 11 a.m. U.S. Central on Mondays, isn't that correct? It's kind of shifted recently, so I've lost, I think it changed slightly. It's at noon Central every other week, Mondays, okay. and we are skipping next week. Okay. So we are meeting again, I think, on the 23rd. I just, the reason I ask, and doesn't need to be like, solve now, but I know that folks from the Asia Pacific call have a keen interest in this as well. And I know noon central would be a rough time. It's actually not that horrible. Um, what time is noon central in uh, Asia? It's, it's like oh, four in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I got this wrong. I was thinking, I was thinking they're 10 Pacific. I, mean, I, I was off by 12 hours. Or Lucas. Four, nothing, that's nothing. Yeah. And I talk to China every, every couple of days. Probably every day. Yeah. <clears throat> first, like we do the Asia Pacific call at eight a.m. and and that's like really early for us Central time folks. Yeah, um, evening. Uh, the, the Pacific Coast folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a pretty horrible time in in Asia Pacific as well. You they, don't have they to solve it now. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. it sounds like we like, would have North America, Asia Pacific, and Europe on this call. So it's somebody's somewhere. Yeah, that's impossible. <laughs> well, it's, it's not, it's like, it's like a 8, 8 a.m. Central has been a, a tolerable for everyone. Um, but the question is, is tolerable? It's 6 a.m. Um, from Lucas. It's pretty yeah. awful. Yeah, so that's I mean, pretty I, early, yeah. Yeah, because I wake up at six and then I have to wake up at five. I mean, <laughs> sorry. All right, let's, right. let's. So, so, I have a suggestion. Yes. Well, what if what if we do have one working group called the, uh, and it's under the app ecosystem umbrella, and we get at least one person who's the current member of the app ecosystem working group to participate in an earlier version of the Asia Pacific call. Make all calls open, but create a separate call because they are so interested in this at a time that accommodates their time zone. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, there's a, but we need at least one person from the app ecosystem working group or the today. Other, there, or the other direction. Uh, or oh yeah, if there's yeah, if there's a person in Beijing who wants to get up at four a.m. 
then <laughs> that, that works like too. Myself. Like I'm up at that 8 a.m. call. Yeah. I could. Yeah. I'm, I'm at both. Yeah. I can do both. Okay. Yeah. I was up early today. So think about time. It. Let's think about that. I, I'd love to okay. bring brain power together that's kind of in the same, I, same world. And yeah. I think you can figure it out. Let me um, uh, throw out one other way we might arrange this, which is um, I don't know if the um, central time people um, would be fine with uh, an 8 p.m. meeting. Depending on your life, that could be totally fine or totally unacceptable because 8 p.m. central is, I think it's 9 a.m. Beijing and it's you know, 6 Pacific. Oh no, but it's horrible in Europe. In Europe. Yeah. Yeah. I, Sorry. Brain I, brain. Uh, well, and we, we already have one of those with the risk working group, we, although we haven't had much engagement from the European community. Okay. Which is, let's, but, is yeah. a, let's move. Yep. Move on. All right. <laughs> so plan we'll bring it up at the Asia Pacific group and ask. Yeah, we'll figure you something out. Yeah. Um, so any other updates from working groups that people would like to bring forward? Evolution continues to work on metrics. Done. Excellent. I also, Thank you. I, I also want to give John McGinnis a chance to introduce himself to the community at some point. No. Hello. I was not <laughs> expecting to be called out. Um, Sorry. It is. I uh, fine. Fine with me. Um, I would also like to point out that it is quite early in the day for me as well. Even though I am in Central, I typically wake up quite a few hours from now. Um, but hello, I'm John. I work with Sean on Augur. I'm a student at the University of Missouri currently, and I'm happy to be here. John's a very experienced developer. Welcome, John. We're glad to have him. Welcome, John. Welcome. Okay. Um, last call for working group updates. All right, thank you. Um, there is a web content meeting that occurs, I'm not sure who put this in here, but it occurs once a month and it's been attended pretty lightly. It seems like a lot of the web content stuff just occurs ad hoc that we may not need an official meeting. Sean, I know you've been working with Kevin deeply. Yeah, Kev Kevin and I, have, yeah, we ad hoc just found time to basically figure out what was going to break when we moved to the website. And it turns out the only thing that broke was uh, a glitch with our hosting provider, not wanting two domains with chaos.anything in them. But we fixed that uh, with a ticket in about 10 minutes. And otherwise, it went very smoothly. We were done in like 15, 20 minutes. OK. I mean, I, if nobody's attending and everything's kind of getting done well ad hoc, I would just suggest that that's how we proceed. Yep. And I think Kevin would be, appreciate any volunteers who want to help manage web content because I think that's a heavy load for him. And it should get a lot easier, I think, with the switch, the move to the new platform. I know that he's going to have a lot more administrative control over the web pages. Another concern is how do we provide transparency? <laughs> And in what is happening there? A Slack channel. Slack channel or mailing list. So that's the the idea that uh, Kevin and I were discussing because no one showed up to the content meeting. I was the only one there this week. And then uh, the previous weeks, it was only Kevin. <laughs> Would you be OK with the Slack channel? Sorry, what? What do you think about a Slack channel? as a way to just improve transparency. Yeah. OK. It's been very efficient for Kevin and I to coordinate this via text. There's not a lot of discussion. I've been quite pleased with how we've, like, Slack is used in the Chaos Project as a whole. Yeah. I agree. Speaking of Slack, right now we don't track the community activity that is happening in Slack on our dashboard. So I just want to bring that up, see if anyone had concerns about adding Slack data to our dashboard. 
we were tracking IRC, but IRC, we didn't have any activity there. I have, I have no, um, I have no issue tracking it. I, I might suggest that we spend the probably $40 a month to have a paid Slack membership so we don't age out messages if we want to do metrics on it, because otherwise we will ultimately lack a historical record. We talked about um, this for like the last month and opted not to do that. No, I know, I, but no, if, you're, right. if, you, if you're going to yeah, do why, metrics, I think you should keep the record. I mean, if you, once you capture the metrics, it doesn't matter whether you lose a record after the 10,000 messages or not, you still have the record. It's correct. Well, we have to copy uh, um, of I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I don't like, I mean, this is maybe too personal, but I don't like the idea of Slack giving another $40 a month. They don't need it. We can, can I, can we have this discussion later? We, yeah. we did have this discussion for like a month um, and chose to not do this and so um, i just i need to get through the yep the, go for it okay okay so um just google summer of code sorry that was my dog making a weird sneezing noise if you heard that um google summer of code uh, honestly from from my perspective it's going really really well this summer <laughs> yeah it's the best this is the best google code of summer ever yeah, I, I mean, Google I, Summer of Code. I, I understand. I followed. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I don't know if people have comments, but I just like to say, you know, well done to the students and well done to the mentors. Um, maybe I'm not seeing everything, but it, it looks really great so far. And I do think it's coming to an end relatively soon, isn't it? Don't we end? It's end of August. Like we have another August. three weeks or four weeks, including this week. Okay, great, cool. Um, kind of the last thing, I just, I, we don't have time today, but I know that a lot of people have been working on the ethics statements. So thank you for that. And I'm sure we'll pick that up next week. We had that last week, so I'm doing some work in. And then the, the last um, thing is with ChaosCon kind of slash events. Does anybody wanna, I know Sean, you had mentioned you had a panel accepted um gamer not a chaos not a chaos con or no just I'm sorry. <laughs> events in general events in general sorry pre accepted no proposal required just i'm in <laughs> so just events you, yeah okay um yeah do we want to go back over those or what do you want to no, just you add just to the na georg we have a panel ossna yeah, Open Source Summit North America at the end of September. I have um, a session at Practical Open Source from the OSI in mid-September. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know if anyone submitted to OSPOCON Europe and the FINOS, uh, the Open Source Strategy Forum in London in beginning of October. We have all things open. I know I have a session there about metrics, um, October 18, 19. And then we currently have CFPs due this week for the Linux Foundation Member Summit. I know several of us are working on uh, proposals there. And that's all the upcoming events I have tracked. Thank you. Yes, uh, I do plan on submitting to the member summit as well. So I think the deadline is the eighth, just so you all know. I think it's the end of the week. All right. For, for which one? The member summit. Oh, yeah. I've already submitted those. Okay. okay. Um, all right, cool. So, Sean, thank you. I'm going to end this meeting here because I just have a chaos kind of question about sponsorship that I don't need to record. So, right. Sean, could you stop the recording? Thank you, everybody, I, for I, I, getting through this. Yes. Getting through our